Hi, welcome back to my channel. Um, I've had a fantastic couple of days sewing and I've managed to record a couple of videos. I've done a matching set because who doesn't like a matching set? I've done the Oakley crossbody bag and the Socialite accordion wallet. I've re-recorded another, another video. I'll put, pop the link down below for the new one. I had technical gremlins and the very last step didn't record on the new video but the old video has the section on that the bit that was missed and all the bits that I missed in the first one are all covered in this one so everything apart from the final sewing the seams together is in that video but I mean what an amazing set I mean who doesn't love an amazing set the vinyl is from so confused so confused fabrics i'll drop a link down below for her um and the zip and zipper tape is from zipper station in the uk i mean i found this lovely um zip actually like um a carabiner there, this clips open so I just thought I'd make a nice extra feature so if you want to see how to make the purse which has got two zipper pockets lots of card pockets etc then that's down below and this video is for this amazing Oakley crossbody bag now this might be a small bag I was like I don't like small bags but actually it's quite big but it has lots of pockets. So you have a slip, you have a slip pocket here. You then have a zipper pocket here. You then have another zipper pocket here. And as if that's not enough, you've got a slip pocket there. So that's your front. You turn it round. You've got an optional zipper overlay. You have another zipper pocket. And then you open the bag up with another zipper pocket so you can keep all your your contents are safe and you've got two slip pockets so it's certainly not short on pockets i love the way the um handle connectors are done i haven't done that before and i thought it was amazing i'm going to share a few tips with you um i haven't made this bag before so in this video this is the first time I've made it so if you ever see me looking a bit confused it's because I'm trying to read the instructions um, without saying them out loud um, so um, yeah a couple of things to just help you if you're trying to decide on what you're going to do on your main panel this one the front slip pocket that is E so this is E then C piece is actually all of this, that the E pocket, and then these are the F pieces. The Fs do have a raw edge on them. So if you are using cotton or um, you'll need to fold them over. But I did use some edge coat on mine. Um, so yeah, so that's your E, that's your C, that's your F. Now your D is this little one here. That's your D. And then this is your A. So the back and the front. So you could do your D in a different one. It's entirely up to you. I only did one A in the snake skin crocodile skin whatever um because i didn't have enough i wouldn't have i would have had to use up too much and not had enough of the fabric left for another another piece um i've also edge coated the sides um this is an absolutely amazing bag um 
I like crossbodies and in my mind it was quite small but it's really not it's a nice big bag so if you want to give it a go the video is down below I'm afraid it is almost three hours long but I do do it all step by step um, so I really hope you enjoy this video um, and if you do please like and subscribe my channel to my channel thank you bye <coughs> So we're now going to do the um, exterior back. So for this, you will need your zipper and your zipper pull. And then I just, in mine, uh, burn on the edges. And I also, once I've opened it, I just bar tap across the, I'm just going to, so I've just bar tacked across the end just to make sure that my zip doesn't come off. So you'll need your zip with your zipper pull, your pocket pieces s and t your r zipper pocket facing um rachel does call for say to use interfacing for the in interfacing for the for the this but i get in such a pickle so i just use matching whatever i'm using this is cotton we're going to need our zipper overlay and zipper piece K. K. So I'm going to pop those to the side for a moment and we're going to take our zip and our back pockets. Again, again in the pattern there is a slight size difference between S and T but I always get confused so I just do I just do the two pieces the bigger size and then I'll cut it off at the end so you are going to want to lay your zipper piece S with your zip on top pin So you then want to stitch along there and then you want to flip it out and top stitch down and then you want to take your zipper piece T and you want to place your zipper piece T down on top with it facing up as well. You just want to make sure you line up your bottom piece with your top piece as you have a bigger zip than you do zipper pocket. Just makes it easier to put your zip in. Do the same again. it up 
now we're going to take our exterior main panel piece now they're quite close in measurements um so i've just written top on the top of mine so i know so we need to find the middle make a snip and again there now we want to take our I'm going to mark a box on it using the instructions in the pattern so we need to mark it down what it says in the pattern draw a line and then draw another line the same distance that's again in the pattern that's not straight I use good old biro because you're not going to see it anyway mark it down I put a little T at the top so that I know it's that one and Oh, excuse me. And then taking the middle, take the measurement that again it gives you in the pattern to make your box. So you'll now have a box like this on your zipper. Check we're on the top. Come down the amount it says. In the pattern take your bit that's folded with your line line them up in the middle and now we are going to stitch along I just do the top and the bottom I don't do the sides anymore You can take your stitch length smaller. And get as close to that edge as you can. And then you can do down the sides, but I don't do that anymore. draw a line in the middle as shown in the pattern um, yeah, I just grab my seam ripper roughly in the middle I used to do lots of measuring but I've done so many now I can pretty much eyeball it Again, you are going to want to clip as close to the inside as you can get without cutting your stitches. So this makes the little V, so you get a nice sharp turn when you turn it in. So now we're going to bring it through. And we're going to give it a quick press. First of all, I'm going to finger press it to get it nice and smooth. You also need to be aware if you've used vinyl, which I have, if you're not careful, you can melt the vinyl. So use a iron sparingly. So this little V bit's just popped out, so I'm just going to pop it back under. And that's where if you sew across it, it keeps it in. Um, so I'm just going to iron that and I'll be right back. So I've just given that a quick press. The um, vinyl wants to keep 
fighting itself to pull itself round but I don't press it too much because I don't want to melt the vinyl so I'll just grab a couple of my pin curl clips and I will just help to keep that flat this is just your facing so that when you put your when you put your zipper on you've got no raw edges on the outside and if you're new to doing it use a color that matches your outside and then it doesn't it doesn't matter if you can't quite get as good a fold so right now taking your completed zipper panel and your back panel we are just going to place them down on top of each other now this is where you could use double-sided sticky tape and you'd place it along and use a dab of glue just to help keep everything in place so you're lining up your um, zipper more with your pocket than the edges of the tape and things because your zip is longer Now you want to stitch that down. I'm starting at the corner where the zip is. Don't forget to lengthen your stitch. V wasn't sitting quite under it nicely so I've just pulled it out. Now as you come down this side you want to be aware that your zipper pull is still hanging out. So when I get to here I stop I lift my foot up and I poke my zip pull through. Grab my hemostats, just give them triangles a little pull, turn, and now I sew down. Now, making sure you've got your back one that side and one sticking out otherwise you end up sewing your zipper um, together now I'm adding the overlay so we need to grab the overlay right so you want to grab your overlay now I mean how cool is this vinyl I have um, edge coated mine so it's got the black the black edge to it um, and what you're going to do is you're just going to place it on top also the bit I had wasn't quite as wide so I have had to adapt the end a bit ever so slightly again you can add some glue or you can add um, double-sided tape just going to add it round the zipper so that we can put the zipper overlay on 
and it will stay put because we can't use pins because this is vinyl so just going to lay that over the top as it says in the um, description it's an overlay right now I'm going to give that a stitch again making sure that your zipper pocket is across your work is across your workbench otherwise um yeah um you can end up stitching your pocket together i have done that a few times so i'm going to close my zipper up and i'm going to stitch an eighth of an inch away from the edge up in my stitch length close to there I'm going to lift my zip my pull up my foot up even and I'm just going to stitch around here this is this is we're stitching our overlay on now um, because our zip has already been put on underneath Now we're just going to stitch around the edge of our overlay. Slowly round the corners. the overlay attached so we now want to take our pockets now as I said I don't I don't worry about which one's my top or my bottom because I'd get really confused so all I do is I just Grab me scissors and cut the extra off. I think I need some new scissors. And then what I do is I finger press the bottom over. And I finger press the other side over so they match. clip on. Now what we're going to do 
is we're going to stitch down these two sides. So we want to make sure our fabric, our front panel is out of the way. And we stitch down using the seam allowance in the pattern, making sure we get Back up, back zipper pocket, and it's left open. So now we are going to cut the excess zipper off. I'm just going to give that another. And there we have our back panel. Okay, you're going to take your fleece that you've prepped in advance. It tells you in the pattern what to do. You're now going to take your completed back panel piece and we are going to place the interfacing on the back. Pulling the pocket through. So the zipper pocket comes out because it didn't quite measure mine right. What a surprise. Not. I am going to use some basting spray because I've used vinyl and it's not always sticky. So there we go. That is now your fleece attached to your back panel. And there's your back panel. Right, now we're going to do the exterior front. So we need pieces P and Q. And we need piece front panel piece C. I'm using vinyl and cotton. And we'll need our zip. And you're also going to need your zipper pull, that is the required length. Uh, if you're using zipper tape by the metre, you'll need your zipper pull. There we go. So, I just found this lovely little heart. It's like a carabiner. So. Just going to burn the ends. It just saves them from unravelling on you. And we're going to do the these exactly the same way we just did the We're going to do this exactly the same way as we just did the back zipper pocket. You'll put the you'll put P down on stitch and then you'll do the Q.
that's now our zipper done. So now we want to take our piece C and I want to mark the middle again. It's always handy to mark the middles because you never know when you're going to need them. And it's easier to do them before you add before you add stuff to them. Gonna need your piece of O. Which is again I'm using my quilting cotton. The pattern does say interfacing, but whatever you're happier using, I'm going to mark the box and then we're going to stitch through it just like we just did.
and there you have your finished pocket which you can it's now sealed and that is now your front pocket and also as you saw i struggled i didn't think about the size of the clip what we got there in the end now we're going to do the lower slip pocket so we'll need pieces e and pieces f when you've cut them you need to make sure you've done mirror images of them put that to one side for a moment now we're going to place e with the bits at the top right sides together and we're going to stitch across the top and down to construction then and then grabbing your pinking shoes Bring your pinking shears just cut along you can do v's along here it just means that when you turn it you get a smoother edge now you're going to have to flip it over and you're going to want to fold them so you've got a nice top edge going to stick top stitch across the top when we've got the edge nice and flat we're going to increase our stitch length stitched across there we are going to grab our piece C and I'm going to grab our chalk marker and we are going to measure in the required distance from the edge of this we're going to place it on the middle of there and now we're just going to stitch down the sides making sure we've moved the pocket at the back and close to the edge again making sure the pocket's out the way and then we're going to take our Okay, so we're going to get our P F pieces, which all have a raw edge on them, so I have edge coated. 
the sides we're now going to clip those on slightly longer up my measurement somewhere along the line right so when you've pinned it we're now going to stitch all along the edge so make sure you've got your longer stitch length the other side hanging by a mill or so. That's it. And that's now your front, your, your pocket E. You'll see with your Fs added. So now we're going to do the upper slip pocket. So we're going to need piece A. B, K, again, I've written top on just so that we know that's the top, and N for the pockets, and M for the tabs. So let's start with our, so as well we'll need our zipper tie. Zipper tape, zipper tape, and a magnetic snap, and a zip. So first of all, we're going to take piece A. Now I've done mine in two different, two different um, vinyls, only because I didn't have enough of this one. So this is going to be the front piece, and this is going to be the back piece. So I'm going to use the back piece because that is the piece that the magnetic snap is going to be on. And we are going to find the centre. Again, always good to find the centre. Little snip. Just makes it easier to line them up. Let's put one in it. Right. So with it the right way up, we are going to come down. Like it says in the pattern just 
few little dots and then I literally pop it in and do draw two little lines so that I can then grab my seam ripper pop a couple of holes it's always better to make small holes you can always make them bigger but you can't make bigger holes smaller and I'm also just to reinforce my um, magnet I'm going to pop a bit of Decaville Heavy from my scrap pile behind it just to give it a little bit more reinforcement Table edge to push him down. Okay, so that's now the female magnetic bit onto A. Now we're going to take piece K, which I've marked as the top. I'm going to find the center top and bottom. Now I'm going to pop the male piece in, mark down the amount shown. Pop the washer on the mark and my two lines, grab my seam ripper. Remember, little mark because you can always, little slit because you can always make bigger, you can't make smaller. Pop the male one in, turn it over. That's my bit of Decaville. My scrap bit of Decaville. Put a couple of holes in. Lid back on. Uh, oh. that's now on the front piece so you've got your female and you've got your male so now we'll pop that to one side for a minute and we're going to want piece B I have resisted the urge to use waterproof canvas in this only because the front has lots of pockets and I'm finding waterproof canvas is getting quite thick and heavy when you're doing it and you've got lots of um, layers. Right, we're now going to place um, A and B right sides together and we are just going to stitch across the bottom with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Don't forget to start and um, back stitch. Now we are going to fold it down. We will have to finger press it here because my iron will melt the vinyl otherwise so with this bit down we're going to top stitch just along here up our stitch length So 
So now we're going to pop that to one side and we're going to need our zipper tape, zip and M. So now we're going to take our zipper and we're going to add our zipper tape tabs to it. So there is a specific measurement it should add by the time you've added your um, zipper tabs onto. Um, what I've done is I've done it slightly different just so that I can make sure I can get it to the size it's needed. I folded both ends in so that um, there's no raw edges and then I've pinned that one on and what I've done is I've drawn a line as to where this one I need to slide in so that there's some zipper tape in there but there's not a huge amount because it it makes it easier for sewing it up if you haven't got bag uh, zipper tape in the ends so we're now going to take that and sew it at the sewing machine measure the amount in the pattern just get rid of any loose threads and now we want to take this and find the middle going to use a gold marker pen just because with a tiny dot just in the middle so that I can see it it doesn't rub off so We are going to need our other piece A and we are going to place our zip right, so we place piece B right sides up and we place the zipper top face down. So we also need the middle of this piece. Just make the middle at the top as well you never know so we're going to line this piece up with our zip Pin it in place right now there should be be a certain amount away from the edge if that is the case move your zip and then just give it a wiggle because sometimes it needs to be under tension for it to work properly and now we're going to sew that along here
down to construction then to see. Right, so now we're going to stitch that together. Remembering to stop before we get to the zip. Lift our foot up. Now we we've done that. We now need to take our piece in with it wrong sides, wrong side up. And we're going to just lay that on there. In the two ends and then give it a wiggle to make it fit the rest. Now best way to do this is starting on the other back side so along the line of stitches that you've just done, being aware that your zip head will be nearer the top. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put it down and we are going to top stitch across here. Now we're going to take our piece we've just finished and our other piece A with the magnetic clip on it. I'm going to put them together. I always like to do the first and go to the la to the edge, middle, edge, and then edge, and then just waggle it around, and then you tend to find that you can get it all to even up otherwise sometimes you end up with um, go all the way around and you've got bits overhanging so now you need to sew those two together shears because this is vinyl and we can't um, iron it well you can iron it but it makes a mess of your your vinyl and your iron and yeah you have to start again if you haven't got pinking shears then just um, little little slits will help with the turning process so that you can then just turn and get a really nice clean edge. Roll it between your fingers and your thumbs. That just helps to bring the C 
seem nice because we can't iron it so we have to just do our best and now we're going to top stitch along here just being aware of the zipper the snap can sometimes get caught on your foot plate rope plate to do is so now we're going to get piece D and our piece we've just done and we are going to flip them all out the way and we are going to put middle to middle So it can feel a bit weird, but it's trust it, you'll get there. So you've put you've got your A piece, your zip you've just done, and then your D piece. Now you're gonna sew along there. Remembering to watch out for your zip. I do apologise if you can hear the rain falling. So now you've you've tacked that on, you are going to move them out of the way. And then taking this, you are going to pop it on right sides. So now you'd have um, so when it's finished, this will sit up here like this. And in here will be your zip pocket. So you'll have your, these two will be right sides together so that when you go in through your zip, you've got your right sides together. So we now sew that, let me see my allowance given. I need my slightly smaller foot. Now, as I took a slightly bigger seam allowance last time, I will just fold in on that. But you want to make sure nothing's caught in your seam, otherwise you'll be making friends with your seam ripper again. And you want it all under your machine. Want to know what we're having for dinner? Although we've only just had lunch. Right. 
now we have our zip pocket. So now we want to lie it. Close this zip. Now we want to lie it all. Make sure you've moved it all out of the way and we're just going to top stitch along here oh my needles come on thread to want to bring right so now we're going to form the pocket so you want to make sure that you fold clip everything together well bring your two end pieces together and again folding it nice and flat making sure all your pieces match up and now we're going to sew that with the seam allowance in the pattern oh, just making sure when you get to the machine it doesn't slide like it just did with me let's turn it again just so I can make sure everything is aligned I must have had more in my zip pull in my tab this side is slightly more bulky And now you have your invisible slip pocket. How amazing! How wow! Yeah, okay, never mind. <clears throat> I'll cry up one day. Right, so now that is. almost all done what we need to do now is get our C panel and we're going to add it wrong sides together bulky on the rest of the bag but that's fine just bear with it clip the seams around right now I'm going to sew that with the seam allowance in the pattern A 
as we've sewn round the curve again, we just give it a pinking shears. If you haven't got pinking shears, little cuts will work. Now we're going to turn this. Oh wow, I did quite good at matching those up when I was cutting it. Oh, it's always good when something comes together well. Roll it between your fingers and use your fingers to finger press because being vinyl, I can't heat it up. So now we're gonna top stitch along there. amazing it's a hidden it's a hidden um a hidden zip this is the first time i've made this bag i haven't made it before so you guys are with me on my run of the first time i've made it where's my screwdriver i'm a screw loose see this is why i try tidy up as I go. So that I don't lose things like my screwdriver. Right. Increase your stitch length. And then top stitch along here. Fantastic. Right. Now we need our B panel. Oh, B panel, our K panel. And Right, so now we're going to take our panel and we want to make sure that our zipper tabs are up and we want to give them a pin in place and they should be, this lip should be a, a certain length down from the top which is in the pattern and now what we're going to do is we're going to match up all the layers. We had wind yesterday, we got rain today. Now we're going to baste it all together around the outside edge. E panel, our C panel, our D panel and our A panel. And now we take our K 
okay panel this is where hopefully we've managed to do it right and everything matches up Now we are just going to paste all that together. And that is now your front exterior done. How amazing, I love it. And I'm quite juffed. I managed quite well with the lining up when I was cutting. Right, so now we're gonna go on to the next step, which is the connectors. Right, so now we're gonna do the side panels and the connectors. So you're gonna need your side panel pieces G, your connectors, and your D rings, and I'm going to do some rivets. Um, I have, I don't know if you can see, I have edge coated my strap connectors um, so that you can't see the white from the. Um, backing um, so we're gonna um, slip it down okay so we're gonna take our connector and we are going to make a line just here and we're just going to bring that down to that line and clip it. And do the same on this one. down to the line. I do like these connectors. I've not done them. I've not done this bag before so I've not seen these. Right so we are now I am gonna do it slightly differently. I like glue. I'm going to stick just a tad of glue there. And then what I'll do is, um, it says to stitch across here, but I'll do it all in one go rather than trying to match up my stitching. to dry and we will set up. So we now need our G piece and we are going to find the centre of them all again. I 
just cut mine in a little bit. are going to measure down the distance required in the pattern. And then we are going to get our connector and that is going to sit directly the line, the D ring will be at the top. So I'm just going to splodge a bit more glue because you know, glue, glue, glue. I end up gluing it in. Now, I'm going to glue, going to sew across it. I'm going to sew around the outside here and around the outside there. if I have thread in my machine. I knew I meant to do something. around that. I am going to add some rivets to it. Okay, half of that didn't stitch. Now it's going to mess around. That's one of our connectors done. Just need to do the other one now.
put it in the middle, not round the edges. So it's not in my seam allowance, but it just helps to hold it down. one done. So now I'm going to add some rivets. I'd love a rivet template again, not so easy to get hold of in the UK, but you know, always looking. It's always a recipe to go wrong when you do it like this, but let's, let's wing it. realised you couldn't see me putting the rivets in so I've done it off camera 
Now that's the rivets done. Side connectors. Now we need to do the pleats. Side on a ruler to make the folds pleats. And what we're going to do is going to take the ones nearest the middle and move them over to the ones. Nearest the edge. Making sure to keep everything nice and straight. And then pinch wrong sides together. take your time with it as this is vinyl it will be a bit more want to fight you but you just have to keep working it right pack that in place So now we're going to pop those aside for a minute and we're going to start uh, going to add the sides to the bottom panels. Right, now we're going to take our bottom piece, which is our lining piece, and we are going to mark what it says in the pattern on the bottom ones and then on this one So we are measuring the amount required in the pattern. you've marked your bottom panel you are going to take one of your side panels right side up and align the short edge
going to stitch with this required seam allowance starting and stopping at those lines that we've just made same on the other side and starting and stopping those marks that we drew done that we can trim the seam uh, fold the seam allowance back it would just say you could iron it but of course you can't iron it because it's final Okay, so now we're going to do the same. Should have done the pleats in the lining panel as well. I misread that step. So when you do your main panel, side panels, also do your other ones, lining ones. And now we're gonna start. stop on the lines that were drawn and you find almost all um, designers use um, different seam allowances uh, for their lining. They normally use a slightly bigger one. Right. Press, and press this one open because it's um, fabric and then we'll start the slip pocket. Right, so now you're going to need your interior slip pocket piece U and one of your lining pockets. So you're going to put your U pieces right sides together and you are going to sew them the top pinking shear top hold it over get the roll between my fingers Quick 
press with the iron as it's cotton. And then top stitch, increase your seam uh, stitch length. Now take one of your L pieces and pop it down and pop this on. a bit larger on the edge right. pop it on down the bottom stitch it on and then what you can do is work out where the middle is and then just stitch down there to back stitch well at the top that's your interior pocket with your zip zip that's your interior slip pocket okay so now we're going to take one of our front panels and our side panel and we are going to clip them together at the top right so you're going to pin down side and I've just turned over because I can't iron them and you're literally going to sew down to here and stop here using the pack the using the seam allowance stated in the pattern that seam allowance all the way through. do the same with the other side making sure like I almost did then you don't twist it so 
So imagine you're putting it round. That's it. So you don't end up with a big twist in it. Now, this front panel is quite thick. Um, so you do want to make sure you leave... Um, you, you don't go too mad on the fabrics and I'm quite glad I didn't put waterproof canvas in the pockets because this would make this bit really really thick and your machine may struggle if it's not used to that right so what have you done why have you zips on this side to make sure they're out of the way I'm going to start at the top at the bottom this time but I'm starting where I would finish if I was coming the other way around Right, now you've done that, we are now going to attach the bottom. So when we've done that, we're now going to stitch right across the bottom. And your stitch line should intersect. sides added to your bag so now now we're going to add the back panel Now 
we had the back panel in exactly the same way we just did the front panel. This might feel a little bit weirder because you've got the other side attached. Just making sure I keep the zip out of the seam allowance. just before you get to the end I'm just bringing me a cup of coffee right now we're going to st stitch across again on the last one sorry it's not easy to show you guys I'm going to stitch straight across like we did last time catching all the seams going 
to just trim the seam allowance down. Just being careful on the corners that you don't go into any of the um, stitching. I know a lot of people don't necessarily think, okay, why, why do a large seam allowance and then cut it down? You're wasting fabric. Well, the quarter of an inch is not really an issue to me but uh, a bigger seam allowance and then cutting it down to a quarter of an inch any day it's so much easier if you've got thick layers you, you've just got so much more jiggle room and believe me sometimes you need the jiggle room as you can see when you're planning to do this bag this is the front seam and it can get quite thick. So I have literally just used um, vinyl, vinyl um, G700, which is the equivalent of SFF 101 here um, and cotton, quilting cotton, um, yeah you need to be something to be aware of those seams do get quite thick. Right, just this one to trim down. Right. Hopefully it's still holes in the bottom. Yeah. Right. So that's that's that for now. And we're going to do the same with the lining. in the right in the right way just so that we can have a look and just check everything is as it should be see the way the corners are done it takes the bulk out of the corners so the corners don't have the bulk that they could have oh wow me like Wow. This is a, yeah, looking good. And I'm liking it. Right, so let's do the lining now. Okay, so now we're going to do the same with the lining. Um, but what we're going to do is start with the same seam allowance that we had for the external. But by about an inch from the top, we're going to go out to the bigger seam allowance stated in the pattern so that you get a tighter, snugger fit inside. finish at the end so it makes it easier you get a nice straight clean bottom opposed to 
a really bulky big bottom and we don't really want big bulky bottoms if we can help it. So I'm starting at the bottom this time, I'm doing the big seam allowance and then as I get nearer the top I will come in and make a smaller seam allowance. And then the reason for that is it just means that then the tops meet, otherwise if you don't do it your tops don't meet and then you end up with all sorts of problems. And if you're never sure, nine times out of ten, the lining to sew it together is easier because you haven't got all the bulk um, and mostly it's just made out of quilting cotton or just a few layers. So you don't have all the other layers to actually get um, through. So if you're worried or you're a bit scared, you're not sure, you can always do the lining first to make sure that you can, that you know what you're doing because this always goes through the machine much easier, much quicker um, normally. Again, I'm going to start at the bottom because I just like to have my fabric all to that side, not under. And then the last bit before I come to the top, just bring my seam allowance in. you can trim your seam allowances down just being aware of your corners
now that's all done. Now that's all done, we are going to turn it right side out. go and there's your slip pocket loving this bag okay so now we're going to need our okay now we're going to need our v panel stops and our long main zipper just going to just added the zipper just need to Burn the ends, stops your zipper from fraying. Now, this takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you've mastered it, it's really, really easy. So, you want to mark down the required amount in the pattern, and then what you do is on that line, you literally just pinch it like that. That's how I do it. So you literally pinch it and then bring it around. So you get a nice square. Different people do it slightly different ways, but that's how I how I do mine. Literally, so across the ends. So now your ends, your zip's not going to come off. So I'm going to add the zipper tab on at the end, but as I've used vinyl, I am literally just going to fold mine over and then I will put it on and then at the end I will edge coat the ends. do though just so that I don't lose the zip on the end is a little bar tack. Oh. <coughs> okay for my zipper tab I am using, I'm doing it slightly different because I'm using um, vinyl. I've edge coated that side, and then what I'll do is once I've stitched, I will edge coat that side um, because vinyl can be left raw. Um, so that's what I'm going to, um, to do. Um, so just cut the end off. And as you can see, it saves it from getting really thick if you. Um, roll it lots of times it can become really thick and hard to get under your needle um. just to make sure 
short space on. When I finish the bag, I'll edge coat it. So now we want to take our zipper panels and we want to mark in. what it says to mark in now taking one of them you want to take your Rain zipper, so you've measured in, you want to place one of the main fabric zipper panels right side up. Okay, so you're going to make sure you can see two in you can make sure you see your mark on this side where you will place your zipper to edge. You will then make sure your zipper goes all the way down to your last mark. I'm going to put a one of those on so I know. Now I'm going to put on a lining. So they are right sides together, wrong sides facing up. Move that to there. Now, what we're going to do is sew using seam allowance stated in the pattern. So we're going to start at the top here. Start and stop back stitch. Now we're going to sew over the tape. We're going to keep going. To here. Now what we're going to do is stop with our needle down. Take that off, slide our zipper tape out from underneath, slide our zipper tape out and we continue to the end. So when you then turn it over and you read it the zipper, you can see you have tail that's out and then you see it's caught in so you can see it's caught in there and then it comes out the other end going to pin the layers together because of course being vinyl you can't iron it if you've used just quilting cotton nip over to your iron and give it a good press Now 
now we're going to repeat the same on the other side. So we want to take our marks that we put on the back, just on the front. the edge and clip and then clip it all the way along again until we get to that mark. This one and just to make sure it goes there, and then just come up to here. Same thing again, starting at the top, stitching all the way down, making sure the zips open. My zip decided it was going to slip slightly. Slip zip. It's fine. Let's keep it. So that line, stop, lift your foot, and remove the zip from the seam. as well. Okay, so now we've done that, we now want to bring our two exterior pieces together. lining pieces together so our zip is zipped in the middle of it right now we need to align the raw edges I'm just going to bring my corners out so that you know, won't get so much bulk. And then I'm going to do the same. Oh, let's tuck that in. Let's tuck that in there. That's it. Right, now again, I'm going to just open up that seam and that seam, I'm just going to lie them, actually these ones I'm going to do opposite because one's, no it works that side, ok 
open them up so that there's an equal distribution along. Right, now, once you've done that, I'm going to stitch all the way down the sides. So just down the short sides with the seam allowance in the pattern. And I'm also going to get my lighter and just make sure that those are done. Right, so now we want to, it's now a circle, so top stitch around, fold the lining down behind the zipper and align the bottom raw edges. Oh wow, I've not made a bag with a top like this before. It's ingenious. Right. So now now we will top stitch around the top of the zipper tape. top stitch the zipper tape. If I don't have a free arm I'm going to work on the I'm going to turn it and I'm going to put this way in and I'm going to sew along making sure I pull the zip nice and tight. Going to 
seams because they're a little bit bumpy. Rather than ruin my top stitch, just leave that little bit out. How exciting. So now take these off. You want to turn it inside out with the finished exterior. Okay, so you want, you want to pull the inside out, you want to grab your exterior. decide where, where you want the zip so when I look at it I want the zip to be here so it's, it is there at the, the moment So you want to place your zipper ring down over your body so that the right sides are together and whatever side you want the zip when you open it, that's the way it's facing. So yeah, it's there at the moment, when it's closed it'll be there so that it'll go in the same line as those ones. Now you want to line up your centre marks on the sides of your bag with the centre marks on your you so you want to um put the centre marks from your zipper panel you want to line them up with your middle bit from when you cut you found your middle so you want to put middle to side and then making sure your tail is stuck out so you want to get your side bit and this bit and meet, meet them together Done that. 
you want to see. Close that one. Then just, I find that, oh, giving it a bit of a wiggle and just moving it around. It might seem, oh, it's not going to fit, but actually when you move it, it fits well. You just got to jiggle it around until it fits. Now we're going to sew this. Oh, right, so we're going to stitch all the way around with the seam allowance required. Back to construction stitch length. Right, so now you've sewn it, I'm going to give it a trim. The great thing is, is there's not too many bulky bits all together. They're nicely spread out. Now we want to pull it away from the seam. Right. So now turn the exterior wrong side out. sure we've got our back pocket undone because that will be what we'll be turning it through obviously right turn the exterior wrong side out okay I want that bit on the back of there and with the finished experience so we're going to place that inside Ooh. Cheeky, cheeky. It's getting exciting. Right. So I didn't mark the centre of these ones. Let's quickly mark the centre. Mark the centre. Do the same thing 
again. Good job we opened the zip inside because you know you never know. I've done that enough times. Making sure that nothing is up in this seam allowance. Look, you want to be down. That's it. Don't want anything that's gonna stand a chance of getting caught in your seam allowance as you sew round. Now we are going to sew that the seam allowance down again. Oh this is so exciting. I am so excited. to pull, we'll have to find our pocket, there we go, our pocket lining piece, let's see about this way then, we can see it a bit easier, right. so now we've got to pull it through the pocket.
sneezing. Stitch it. Right, I'm going to pop these on. I'm going to go make the kids their tea. Well, go and buy their tea. And then hopefully that will give them a nice crisp edge for me to come and do the final stitching. Top stitching. Isn't that amazing? Oh my goodness, I'm in love. So, all that's left to do is the strap, top stitch, close the pocket in there, and make the strap. Back soon. Right, so I fed the kids. I have done the witch coat on there. Now I'm going to top stitch. Now, best way, best tip I found is if you turn your bag. I don't have a free arm or anything I can do it if I turn it inside out then I can put it along and I can top stitch and it's just a bit easier than trying to do it the other way
few. Okay, so now I've top stitched that. As some of you may have noticed, my machine was playing up. I didn't want to take it out if I could get it round, which was fine. I think I've got a bit of cotton stuck in the bobbin area. So I'll have to sort that out next. So there we go, top stitched. And you've got the zip. Oh my goodness, it's amazing. It's late in the afternoon now, you can see the light from the fire. So, literally just the pocket to sew. What you'll find is because we did the, it's come unturned, because we folded it over when we did it and then sewed the ends down, it means that we get a nice clean edge to just be able to close the, and the threads don't belong. So you get a nice clean edge to close up with. just need to do the strap. I am using webbing so if she actually finds any that's long enough. Done mine about 60 70 inches. Don't know, not quite. Put it out and I'm going to change the ends. Right, so you want to thread it in there. Fold it over. My webbing is just slightly over an inch. I don't have hardware that you can use, but it's fine. It just doesn't sit as nicely. So pop that there. Then you want to pop 
the other bit through the slider. And then if you come to this side, you pop it through, making sure it's not twisted. I think I've managed to do. to come back along and to come up into there up into your slider along and then back through And then you want a couple of inches or about an inch fold over. Clip. I always clip it before I sew it to make sure I've done it right because many a time I haven't. Right. There we go. And there you have and now I'm just going to stitch a little square on there and one on there and we're done.